Okay, here I am riding up Mount Gravatt. Mm. Just having my juice drink. This is my dinner tonight. <clears throat> my wife and kids are away. And, um, well, they're due back tonight. But when you're home alone, you can eat for dinner whatever you please. Bloody beautiful. No bad time to have a juice drink. I thought I'd do this little vlog. Um, I've got some questions to answer, so I'll get to them in a minute. This is um, the ride I did today. It's 85 k's all up. Um, I haven't done any climbing for ages, you know, for probably a good six or seven months. And this is our local climb, Mount Gravatt. It's a 2k climb, average is 7%. So I just went and did a couple of repeats of this at the start of the ride, and then I went on to do the rest of it. So just try to keep it nice and steady, just try to keep a nice steady pace throughout the ride. Um, just to get some um, miles back in the legs and a bit of climbing. Most of the rides I've done for the last little while have only been like 300 metres elevation. And like this today was a thousand metres all up. Um, so anyway, watch this while I'm rambling on. Um, ah, watched a couple of good videos last night, well one last night and one today. One I watched last night was the Marco Martini um, story, The Death of a Cyclist. Um, awesome cyclist he was. And the other one is um, the Lance Armstrong story that I watched today. Those guys are mental. I don't mean in terms of what they can do on the bike, but in terms of what they do, the drugs they take, the EPO. Um, and Mantini says he never took them. He died in the end in his hotel room of an overdose of heroin or cocaine, I think it was. Um, but with the EPOs that they were taking, what they would do, which I didn't realise this, EPO slows your heart rate down, okay? Um, and when they go to sleep at night, they would have to wear a wristband that would set off an alarm once the heart rate got to 35 beats per minute. It would wake them up and they'd have indoor trainers in their hotel rooms. This is during races, during the Tour de France and all the races, Euro d'Italia, all the rest of it. Um, they'd have to jump on these uh, indoor trainers and do a session to get the heart rate back up to literally stop them from dying. If they didn't do this, this is when um, a lot of cyclists that were dying in their sleep, um, a lot of professional cyclists started to die in their sleep. This was why the something that the EPO does, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but apparently the short story of it is it slows your heart and eventually stops it. Um, and yeah, that's what they would have to do. They'd have a freaking alarm set, and it, as soon as the heart rate dropped, bang, they'd have to wake up, get on the train, and do an hour session. And that's on top of doing the 200 Ks every day in the Tour de France. Absolutely mental. There's no way on earth any amount of money would get me to um, do that sort of stuff in any profession. I don't care how much they pay me, it just wouldn't happen. But anyway, some people just want to take that risk, don't they? They want to be the best in the world and all the rest of it. It does make you think, doesn't it, about today's Tour de France, you know? Who is on what? Who knows? Oh, I don't know. But anyway, let's get into some of these little questions. Now, we had one from... Um, let me see. Where was it now? Let me have a look. So I've got, I've got to find them. I've been meaning to answer them for a while. There we go. So this one's from Michael. Now he's saying a waste of time referring to the power meter. Um, he reckons on one of my videos the power meter is just a waste of time. Don't need to use it. And look, to a certain degree, I've got to agree, a power meter is a waste of time if you don't learn how to use it properly. Heaps of people buy power meters and they never learn how to use them. My suggestion is read the book Joel Friel on power meters. He'll explain to you how to use them, how to incorporate them into your training and all the rest of it to get stronger and faster and fitter and all the rest of it. I think the power meter is an awesome tool, okay? So he reckons it isn't, um, I think it is. Um, and he actually does say, what about going back to um, basics, not having all this computerized stuff and going back to your emotions and that. And actually, in the Joe Friel book I read, 
it does actually say on some of your rides, training rides and things, you should actually get your computer, your Garmin device, sling it in your back pocket and ride to emotion and then have a look at the data afterwards and see where you were at, you know, and try and compare the two. Um, so yeah, it is good to understand how you feel um, emotionally on the bike, but you can't beat a pound in my opinion. Another question was, can't see who it was from, but um, do, would I recommend buying a pound in that? <laughs> from the last question, um, definitely I would recommend getting a power meter for definite. Um, they're absolutely awesome, I love them. Um, another question uh, is what shoes would I recommend? Um, what shoes would I recommend? Now look, depending on what you're going to do, if you're going to be, if you're just getting into cycling, you're not sure whether you want to do it long term or whatever, any any pair of shoes. I've got a set here. These are my very first shoes that I got. These are the Shimano RO77, R077, okay? Um, perfectly good shoe, lovely, nice shoe. Um, does everything you want it to do, yeah? And they're cheap as chips. Well, I've got the RX320s now, um, and they're awesome. The, R, the R320s, the Shimano R320s, and they are awesome, they're 320 bucks, but I've got to tell you, they are the most comfortable boot I have ever had. Well, I've only had two cycling shoes, but they are awesome. I did want the City Ergos, a few mates of mine have got those, but my foot was just too wide for them, I couldn't get comfortable in them. So, um, if you're going to get a bit more serious about it, maybe go and get yourself a a uh, nicer set of shoes or I should say if you're going to start doing longer rides get yourself a more comfortable fitted pair of shoes um, and buying them online is a bit of a um, hit and miss I'd suggest you're going to pay a little bit more but I would suggest going down the bike shop and trying them on it's the only way really buying them online unless you know your exact size you've bought the shoe before like if I bought a new pair of the ones I've got now I'd know the size to get yeah and I know they're going to be spot on so then I could afford to buy them online but if they're a new shoe you're trying um, get down the bike shop and uh, do it that way you know or else you're going to end up paying a lot of money for some shoes that you are not going to be comfortable in you don't want that another question is um, is it easier to ride in a pack does that help you go faster than riding solo? That is definite. Riding in a pack is the best way to go if you want to go faster. The reason being is you're not doing all the work. Eventually, you are going to tire. No matter who you are, you're going to tire out. Yeah? Um, so riding in a pack, definitely you will get better average speeds. Right, if you want to get faster average speeds, um, obviously you've got to join a, get a few mates together or something and do a, a ride where there's four or five of you and you're all taking in turns. And try and get rides, try and go on rides when you're going for it, that have got the least amount of traffic lights and islands and things. And that way you're going to get the, um, the best effect of your efforts, I guess. Um, but yeah, definitely riding solo you're going to go a fair bit slower because it's pretty hard to keep up a high average speed um, when you're on your own you know? so yeah definitely do that um, let's see ah camera now it says here uh, this is the last one this is the last question so it says here um, can't see this is from wacko kid can't see why you would change <coughs> the verb Elite, um, the verb or the verb elite are both superb apart from being a tad heavy. Um, why would I change them to the GoPro? You know, my little GoPro I purchased, there it is there. Um, why wouldn't I have gone for the new Verb XT? Um, I did explain on another video, um, I think it's this one actually that you watched, I did explain on another video that I went out to buy the new. Garmin 
camera, but I couldn't find anywhere, so I went with this one. <clears throat> now, since having this one, there are a few little niggly things that I don't like about it. Um, <clears throat> and one of them is I'll have to buy a new bracket, a bike mount. Um, the, what is it? It's the K Edge one, you know, the dual mount. Now, it mounts upside down. Yeah, which is all good, that's no dramas, because it when you rotate it, it knows where to, to point the camera up the other way. But anyway, it mounts upside down, but it's got a screw to go in. But once it's on the mount, it's fixed. You can't get it off. And even the quick release, this thing comes with a quick release, but it only works with the big sticky pads that you get to stick on your helmet or something. If you want it on your bike, you've got to go for the screw on, and then it's locked in. And the only way to get out then is to open the case pretty tight and then pull that back and then pull the camera out but I mean you can't do that when you're riding along the bike you're gonna have a crash right so that's one thing that does annoy me but it is one thing I'm sorting out and I shall show you how I'm gonna sort that out so keep your eye open for my new mount that I'm making um, to how to hold my GoPro <laughs> um, that's one thing that annoys me at the minute with it um, the other thing that annoys me with it is when I plug it into my computer, for some reason, sometimes it will show you the file with the movies on, and then sometimes it won't. You have to sort of plug it in and out, in and out a few times to get it to go. That really shits me, things like that. I mean, it's probably just a program error, um, and it'll probably, a few updates, it'll probably sort it out, but it does annoy me. Um, someone did say to me that um, with this new GoPro Hero 5, they um, are known for the batteries going flat overnight. Okay, um, what he said is he's had his this chap that asked me the question, sent the question, said that he's had um, his GoPro at 86 percent um, when he's gone to sleep, when he's got up in the morning to go on a ride, it's down at zero percent. Right? And apparently, from forums that he read. Um, they are renowned for the batteries going flat overnight. What you need to do is take the battery out. Well, I've got to tell you, I haven't had that problem. Okay, and I think maybe it could be that when you've got voice control on and you say GoPro stop recording, a lot of people may think that as it's turned off, but it may not be. You've got to physically turn it off at the button still for it to completely shut down, or it might stay on standby mode. There are settings in there that you can change, but it will stay on standby mode then, um, and obviously drain the battery overnight. So maybe that's something that's going on, but it hasn't happened with mine. Um, don't know. Maybe it's fixed now or something. I don't know. But it didn't happen with mine. But anyway, that is it. That there are all the quest, the questions. That's my little vlog. Um, oh, look, I must be going up the second time now. I'm going up, go back for the second time. So um, that is it. That is all there is, people. Um, I shall be out again. When will I be out? I won't be out riding tomorrow, and that's what Thursday. But I shall be out again on Friday, which is the thirtieth. So I'll get out there and hopefully the coffee shops will be open again. The bloody coffee shops are all closed, aren't they? You know, not open. Our favourite one, Wine Gum, isn't open until the 4th or 6th of January. I mean, how dare they? How dare they close for that long? Um, so anyway, the last few rides I've done, I haven't had any coffee. But anyway, that is it for now. you got any questions or comments, you know what to do.